வணக்கம் when talking of congenital differences in the hand there is one particular problem that can be diagnosed just by looking at it that is the radial club hand but if we think that the radial club hand involves only the radius bone we will be mistaken because it is a part of a large spectrum of problems known as radial longitudinal deficiency how does this radial longitudinal deficiency develop what are the different clinical features of this particular problem called the radial longitudinal deficiency and how can it be classified we shall see all this in the first part of the series on radial longitudinal deficiency or the radial club hand as it was known as earlier radial club hand a term that was used earlier is actually part of a spectrum of problems involving the radial side of the developing upper limb known as radial longitudinal deficiency the first description of radial club hand was by petty in 1733 who detailed the autopsy findings of a newborn with bilateral absent radii Grube was the first author to make a review of the literature. He reported 14 cases in 1865. Later, Cato made a comprehensive study of the anatomy, pathology, incidence, clinical presentation, diagnosis and prognosis of radial dysplasia. Skerik and Adrian Flatt studied the anatomic variations associated with the radial ray deficiency. and emphasized the importance of the soft tissue abnormalities as well as the surgical and functional implications the basic problem in radial longitudinal deficiency is a deficiency along the preaxial or the radial side of the upper limb so this can include the thumb the carpus the forearm the elbow and even sometimes the humerus when the thumb is involved it is known as thumb hypoplasia and this condition has been classified by bloth but we shall not be considering the hypoplasia of the thumb in this video we shall do it in a separate video later involvement of the wrist per se can be quite varied the trapezium is likely to be small in some patients the scaphoid is usually absent or deficient the trapezoid is also small and carpal coalitions are seen in the ulnar side of the wrist radial longitudinal deficiency can also involve the forearm here it refers to involvement of the radius mainly and ulna as a result and this used to be known as the classical radial club hand forearm rotation is normally absent in types 3 and 4 and reduced in types 1 and 2 and compensation is by the use of shoulder internal and external rotation involvement of the elbow can occur but this affectation is less than that of the wrist it is seen increasingly with growth in severely deficient cases of radial longitudinal deficiency clinical evidence of subluxation of humero ulnar articulation is seen sometimes in extension X-rays may show a shallow acetabulum, poorly developed coronoid process or olecranon of ulna. In severe cases of radial longitudinal deficiency, humeral abnormalities can be seen. In this video lecture, we shall be concentrating mainly on the longitudinal deficiency of the radius, that is involvement of the forearm. This is classically known as the radial club hand. Here the thumb is usually deficient as well it is bilateral in 50 to 72% of cases and the incidence varies from about 1 in 5000 to 1 in 50000 in various studies the male to female ratio is usually about 3 is to 2 the term radial club hand is due to the resemblance of this hand to the golf club to a large extent the etiology of radial longitudinal deficiency is unknown genetic or environmental factors may also be a cause 
the insult, whether environmental or genetic, it seems likely to occur in the critical time between weeks 4 and 5 of embryonic development. Drugs are also known to result in this condition. Maternal exposure to anti-epileptic drugs, particularly valproic acid, has been associated with radial ray deficiency. Other drugs associated with radial ray deficiency include thalidomide, phenobarbital and aminoterin. Disrupted development occurs along the radio-ulnar axis which is controlled by what is known as the zone of polarizing activity. You can click on the link above to access the video where we have discussed the embryology of the growing upper limb. One third of the total presentations are usually an isolated deformity and these are due to sporadic mutations. Two third of patients with radial longitudinal deficiency have associated musculoskeletal anomalies and a total of about one third of all presentations of radial longitudinal deficiency are associated with syndromes. Let us first see the syndromes associated with this condition. There are four main syndromes that we need to know about and look for when we come across a patient with a radial longitudinal deficiency. The TAR syndrome or the TAR syndrome, the Vactal, the holt oram syndrome and the Fanconi anemia. The TAR syndrome refers to thrombocytopenia absent radius syndrome. It is an autosomal recessive trait in which hypomegakaryocytic thrombocytopenia is seen. That is, there is a reduced number of megakaryocytes leading to a reduced number of platelets and bilateral absence of the radii with presence of normal thumbs which may be hypoplastic. The additional disorders that can be seen in TAR syndrome are cow milk allergy, anomalies of the kidney, heart or lower limbs. The salient features of the TAR syndrome are that the thumb is always present. It may be hypoplastic but it is usually present. Radial deficiency bilaterally and usually total. Proximal limb may also be severely foreshortened giving a phocomelic appearance and sometimes what is known as the brachiocarpalis muscle is seen. The important thing to remember is that the presence of this syndrome is not a contraindication for surgery for correction of the radial club hand. The syndrome known as Bactal refers to the presence of vertebral anomalies, anal atresia, cardiac abnormalities, tracheoesophageal fistula, renal anomalies and limb anomalies. The inheritance of this syndrome is sporadic or autosomal recessive or complex. The involvement of the upper limb in this condition is characterized by absent or hypoplastic thumbs, syndactyly, polydactyly and radial dysplasia. It may be associated sometimes with hydrocephalus also. The holt oram syndrome is inherited as an autosomal dominant trait due to a mutation on chromosome 12. It involves mainly the heart and the limb and the phenotypes may vary greatly. Affected families would benefit from genetic counselling. It can involve a hypoplastic or triphalangeal thumb, a radial deficiency causing a radial club hand, long forearm synostosis, and syndactyly between the thumb and index fingers. The main cardiac anomaly seen in holt oram syndrome is atrial septal defect and we must remember that this condition must be corrected before surgery can be done for the correction of the radial club hand. The syndrome called Fanconi anemia is inherited as autosomal recessive or as an X-linked disorder. The manifestation is usually a very severe hypoplasia or aplasia of the bone marrow resulting in anemia, thrombocytopenia and leukopenia. This condition usually presents during mid-childhood. Radial longitudinal deficiency is seen 
and sometimes pigmentary changes are seen in the skin like cafe au lait spots and sometimes renal defects are also seen associated problems like the risk of acute myelogenous leukemia solid tumors of the head neck breast liver esophagus and vulva can also be seen a complete blood count will obviously reveal the problem but we must remember that it is inconclusive in infancy alternatively chromosomal breakage test should be done when this condition is suspected this will help in early diagnosis and planning for the treatment because bone marrow transplantation or umbilical cord blood transplantation can be done in the early stages if identified late this condition has a very poor prognosis and even if identified early and treated the risks of recurring infections are very high we shall now see the clinical features of the radial club hand there is a radial deviation of the hand with a short forearm present at birth it may be associated with a short or deficient thumb which is also one of the features of radial longitudinal deficiency and the hand itself may be smaller there is a perpendicular relationship between the hand and the forearm in radial club hand this right angled position further shortens the limb and limits the ability to reach into space in spite of the very short forearm if wrist flexion is present the hand can reach the mouth because of radial deviation at the wrist sometimes metacarpophalangeal joints are seen with hyperextension and limited flexion flexion contractures may be seen in the pip joints and elbow flexion contracture may sometimes be seen depending on the involvement of the elbow so during the clinical assessment of the radial club hand we need to first note which hands are affected the appearance of the hand and the anomalies the appearance of the thumb and the anomalies associated and we need to measure the angulation and passive correctability of the deviation of the hand usually we will be able to palpate a tightness of the tissues on the radial side at the level of the wrist measurements must be made that is the length of the forearm must be measured and compared to the opposite side in unilateral cases the range of active and passive movements must be measured in the fingers that is flexion and extension in the thumb mainly opposition at the wrist also of flexion and extension similarly the range of active and passive movements of pronation and supination at the forearm and flexion and extension at the elbow must also be measured along with an examination of the involved upper limb in radial club hand we need to do a general examination to rule out any obvious syndromic involvement we also need to get a pediatric consultation a cardiologist consult and sometimes if necessary a genetic counselor consult we shall now see the associated musculoskeletal anomalies which can be seen in 2/3 of the patients with radial club hand considering the skeletal anomalies the scapula clavicle and humerus can be reduced in size there may be a total absence of the radius or sometimes partial deficiencies the ulna may be short or curved or thick end the scaphoid trapezium may be absent in more than 50% of cases the thumb including the metacarpal and phalanges may be absent in 80% of the cases of radial club hand but usually the capitate hamate triquetrum and the ulnar four metacarpals and phalanges are present normally in almost all cases of radial club hand along with the skeletal anomalies certain muscle anomalies are also seen where the biceps muscle is involved the long head of the biceps is mostly absent and if present the short head may be hypoplastic the brachioradialis may be absent in nearly 50% of the cases extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis are also frequently absent or 
they may be fused with the extensa digitorum communis. The pronate arteries may either be absent or rudimentary or it may be present but inserted into the intermuscular septum. The palmaris longus muscle may be deficient. The flexor digitorum profundus and flexor digitorum superficialis may also be deficient. And the pronator quadratus, extensor pollicis longus, abductor pollicis longus and flexor pollicis longus may be absent because these develop on the preaxial border. But some muscles are usually normal. The triceps, the extensor carpi ulnaris, the extensor digiti minimi, the lumbricals, the introsia except for the first dorsal introsias and the hypothenar muscles. There may be associated anomalies of the neurovascular structures also in the involved upper limb in radial club hand. The median nerve may be thickened and it may run just beneath the fascia on the preaxial border whereas the ulnar nerve is usually normal. In very severe conditions, the musculocutaneous nerve may be absent and the radial nerve may end at the lateral epicondyle. The brachial and ulnar arteries are usually normal but the radial artery may be absent. So we need to remember that almost all the structures developing on the radial side of the upper limb or the preaxial border of the upper limb may be hypoplastic or absent. The radial club hand or the spectrum of radial longitudinal deficiency is a type of congenital hand difference. According to the Swanson classification of 1993 which was adopted by the International Federation of Societies for Surgery of the Hand, the radial club hand or radial longitudinal deficiency is classified under failure of formation of parts. Please do click on the link above to see the video where a detailed description of the classification methods have been described. According to the OMT classification of congenital anomalies which was adopted in 2020, there are four types of anomalies, malformations, deformations, dysplasias and syndromes. Radial longitudinal deficiency comes under the classification of malformations. These malformations of the upper limb can involve the proximal distal axis, radial ulnar axis, dorsal ventral axis or any unspecified axis. Under the malformations of the radial ulnar axis or the anteroposterior axis, the radial longitudinal deficiency is seen. And this condition of radial longitudinal deficiency itself may be of many types and we shall see the classification of this condition now. The first described classification was by Haeckel in 1959 when he classified the deformity into three types based on the severity of the defect in the radius. Hypoplasia when the radius is only slightly shortened and ulna is not bowed. Partial aplasia where there is moderate shortening of the radius associated with thickening and bowing of the ulna or total aplasia where there is total absence of the radius and shortened and bowed ulna. This classification was refined by Bain and Klug in 1987 based on the presence of the proximal and distal radial epiphysis into four types. In type 1, there was a late appearance of the radial distal epiphysis leading to radial shortening. This diagram represents the problem of the shortened radius and this is an x-ray representation of type 1. In type 2, there was a small radius with both the proximal and distal radial epiphysis present. In type 3, there was a small proximal radius alone with more severe deviation of the hand. Type 4 represented complete radial aplasia and this was usually associated with severe ulnar bowing with total absent radius. It was James et al. in 1999 who further expanded the spectrum as radial longitudinal deficiency. They added 
the hypoplastic thumb and other radial defects like congenital radio ulnar synostosis and congenital radial head dislocation along with radial club hand and gold fab in the year 2005 introduced the fifth type and this was to include the more severe variant with deficiency of the proximal humerus in addition to the variant of absent radius. We have seen quite a lot of detail with regard to the classification. Let us summarize the classification now and see the involvement of the thumb, the carpus, the distal radius and the proximal radius in the different types. In type N, the thumb is hypoplastic or absent but the carpus, distal radius and proximal radius are totally normal. This essentially refers to only hypoplastic thumb. In type 0, the thumb is again hypoplastic or absent. The carpus may be absent or hypoplastic. The distal radius is usually normal, but the proximal radius may be normal, may be associated with radio ulnar synostosis or congenital dislocation of the radial head. In type 1, the thumb may be hypoplastic or absent. The carpus again may be absent or hypoplastic. But in the distal radius, there is more than 2 mm shortening than the ulna. In the proximal radius, again it may be normal or associated with anomalies like synostosis or congenital dislocation. In type 2, the thumb and the carpus may be present or hypoplastic. The distal radius is hypoplastic and the proximal radius may also be hypoplastic. This is similar in type 3 but here the distal radius physis is absent and there may be variable hypoplasia in the proximal radius. In type 4 both the distal and proximal radius epiphysis are absent and in type 5 along with the absent distal and proximal radius there may be humeral deficiencies also. The X-ray is the most important investigation that needs to be done. In the X-ray, we need to measure the length of the radius, the length of the ulna, the presence of the proximal and distal epiphysis of the radius, the involvement of the carpal bones, elbow, lower and upper humerus, and also the skeletal features of the thumb. Ultrasound to rule out renal anomalies and an echocardiogram are mandatory in all patients with radial club hand. A complete blood count is a basic investigation that must be done, but we need to remember the limitations in diagnosing Fanconi anemia as already discussed. We shall now see the basic principles of treatment of radial club hand. The goals of treatment are to correct the radial deviation of the wrist, to balance the wrist on the forearm, to maintain wrist and finger motion, to promote growth of the forearm, to improve function of the extremity and also enhance the limb appearance for social and emotional benefit. The options available for treatment are either no treatment at all, non-surgical management and surgical management. We shall see the details of the treatment in a subsequent video. I hope you liked the video. I enjoyed making it. Please do click on the shown links to see more about the embryology and the classification of congenital hand differences. And do not forget to subscribe to stay connected with the latest in learning hand surgery, plastic surgery, trauma surgery and ethics. Manakam.